Howdy, partners. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince. Welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. And today, we're going to go over another underrated Disney movie. And it's one that Disney doesn't really like to talk about. Sure, there have been a few films like Song of the South, The Black Cauldron, Something Wicked This Way Comes, or even Mars Needs Moms. But unlike those films, the movie I'll be talking about today is said to be a film that killed off traditional hand-drawn animated films up until The Princess and the Frog came along. But the question is this. Is there anything that redeems this movie? Well, let's find out. Released on April 2nd, 2004, the movie is... Home on the Range. Okay, I won't be doing the Clint Eastwood voice for the whole blog. Anyway, let's get started, partners. A greedy yodeling outlaw named Alameda Slim schemes to take possession of the Patch of Heaven dairy farm from its kindly owner, Pearl. Unwilling to stand by and see their way of life threatened, three determined dairy cows a karate-kicking stallion named Buck, and a colorful corral of critters join forces to save the farm in a wild quest full of high-spirited adventures. Braving bad men and the rugged western landscape, this unlikely assortment of animals risk their hides and match wits with a mysterious bounty hunter named Rico in a high-stakes race to capture Slim and collect the reward money. So... What are my thoughts on this movie? Well, you guys can bash me if you want, because I really like this movie. In fact, this movie is one of my top 13 bad films that I like. But before I get ahead of myself, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Before he pitched the idea for Pocahontas to the Disney Studios executives, Director Mike Gabriel came up with an idea that might combine Captain Courageous with a Western. When production on Pocahontas commenced, Gabriel developed his concept into a 40-page film treatment and sent it to Peter Schneider, and he wrote back, Wow! Soon after that, the project, then titled Sweating Bullets, went into development. The story originated as a supernatural Western about a timid cowboy who visits a ghost town and confronts a cattle rustler named Slim. It was later reconceived into a story about a little bull named Bullets that wanted to be more like the horses that led the herd. In 1999, in an attempt to salvage the production and retain the existing characters and background art, story artist Michael Labash suggested a different approach to the story, with one that involved three cow protagonists who become bounty hunters to save the farm. Building on the idea, fellow story artists Sam Levine, Mark Kennedy, Robert Lentz, and Shirley Peters developed into, into a new storyline. However, in 2000, Mike Gabriel and co-director Mike Guillamo were removed from the project because of the persistent story problems. Returning to Disney feature animation after the completion of The Road to El Dorado, Will Finn, who after this movie directed Legends of Oz with Daniel St. Peter, and John Sanford were brought on board to direct the movie by October 2000. So, what are my thoughts on the animation? Well, to me, this style of hand-drawn animation is pretty good. I just love how the western landscapes look in this movie. Also, while watching this movie, the animation kind of looks like the same style that The Emperor's New Groove had, except uh, not too many cartoony gags. Speaking of which, there are some jokes in this movie that can be pretty funny, like vultures circling a cow who's seeing off key, bulls flirting with the girls, as well as jokes that poke fun at a Christmas song and the Pony Express. But 
there's one joke that was a little mean-spirited, and that was when Maggie called Buck a stallion of the sim moron, which was poking fun at this beauty of a movie. Now, while that joke was pretty rude, it did make sense due to the fact that DreamWorks was Disney's biggest animation rival at the time. Some of my favorite scenes in this movie are the saloon fight, where our three main heroines bump into three saloon gals who look like them, as well as the minecart chase in Echo Mine, which makes the Big Thunder Mountain rides at Disneyland look safer. And of course, I loved the final climax at Patch of Heaven. Now to move on to the movie's song numbers, which were done by the legendary Alan Menken. Who's best known for doing such classic Disney songs from The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and several others. And joining Alan is Glenn Slater. Who, after this movie, teamed up with Alan to do songs for Tangled. The first song is You Ain't Home on the Range, sung by an off-screen chorus. In my opinion, this song feels like a great western song. And it gets funny when we see Lucky Jack get into a series of problems, but ends up okay. Also, this song gets a reprise when the girls are on their way to Echo Mine to capture Alameda Slim. Next is Little Patch of Heaven, sung by K.D. Lang. This is another good song in my opinion, because it feels like a nice way to introduce the farm and the animals that live there. Kind of similar to the Winnie the Pooh song, in a way. Next is the villain song, Yodel Addle Eedle Idle Oo. Now, this song starts out pretty dark and sinister, and later, when Slim pulls out his guitar, he starts yodeling, and like a Pied Piper, he hypnotizes the cows into following him. Now, that's cattle rustling. However, the visuals that accompany the song are pretty weird. It might give folks a Pink Elephants vibe, but the lyrics are pretty catchy and funny. Also, during the song, we hear yodel versions of William Tell's Overture, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, the 1812 Overture, and Yankee Doodle. Next is the saddest song in the entire movie, Will the Sun Ever Shine Again? sung by Bonnie Riot. This is pretty much like the kind of song you'd listen to on a rainy day, or when you're in a sorrow mood. Also, when I heard Alan Menken sing this in concert last year, he mentioned that this song was inspired by the most tragic event in American history, 9-11. Ah, uh, yes. The very event that I saw in the news when I was in fifth grade. It was really traumatizing seeing two planes crash into the World Trade Center, which cost the lives of over 2,000 people, including a very special girl who used to go to my high school before I went there. And I'll never forget the time when I visited the 9-11 memorial in New York City last year. Lastly, there are two songs that play in the movie during the end credits. Wherever the Trail May Lead, sung by Tim McGraw. And Anytime You Need a Friend, sung by the Bow Sisters and Alan Menken himself. Anyway, now that we're done with Mustang notes, animation, and songs, let's talk about the characters and their voice actors. Our main character, Maggie, is voiced by comedian Roseanne Barr. Best known for some risque and raunchy humor you may never hear in a Disney film. Anyway, I like Maggie, because she has a tough and headstrong personality. 
Maggie was once a prize show cow belonging to Abner Dixon, and it is shown that she won several prizes, which could explain her weight. However, Mr. Dixon was forced to sell her to Patch of Heaven after Alameda Slim stole all of Dixon's cattle. Also, I think that Maggie makes a great leader when she tries to think of a way to save Patch of Heaven from being foreclosed. Next is Mrs. Calloway, voiced by Judy Dench, who has been in a few James Bond films, and last year she got to be in Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Now, to be honest, Calloway isn't my favorite character due to her mostly clashing with Maggie. However, there is one running gag that I found pretty funny, and that is when Calloway flies in rage whenever she loses her hat. Kind of similar to a bull seeing red. Next we have Grace, voiced by Jennifer Tilly. Who has been in Monsters, Inc., The Haunted Mansion, and two of the Child's Play films. Now... Grace is my favorite character out of the three. She is very sweet, optimistic, and a happy-go-lucky cow. And sometimes she plays peacemaker between her two headstrong friends. Grace is one of the only cows in the movie who is completely immune to Slim's hypnotic yodeling due to the fact that she's tone deaf. Next we have Pearl voiced by Carol Cook. Pearl is an elderly farmer who owns a farm called Patch of Heaven. Like any farmer, she tends to her farm and livestock. She is shown to love and care for all the animals that live on her farm, especially Maggie. She is also revealed to keep a few photos of her farm animals as fond memories. Next is Sheriff Sam, voiced by Richard Rehill, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, whom I remember from Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Sam is the bumbling elderly sheriff of the town, and Buck's owner. He brings a bank notice to Pearl, explaining that the banks are going to auction off her farm if she can't pay the full amount she owes them, because they are losing so much money due to cattle rustlers leaving behind so much bankrupt ranchers. Also, Sam is willing to pay a $750 reward for the capture of Alameda Slim. Next we have the sheriff's horse, Buck, voiced by Cuba Gooding Jr., whom I only remember from the 13th Land Before Time movie. Buck is always hungry for action and adventure in the town. He is best friends with Rusty, the sheriff's dog, and they both seem to enjoy playing tic-tac-toe together. Buck has a tendency to act, well, immaturely at times, but he can be very helpful when he wants to. Being a stallion, Buck usually has a mind of his own. In my opinion, the coolest part of the movie that Buck is involved with is when he daydreams about fighting bad guys. Next, we come to our villain, Alameda Slim, voiced by Randy Quaid, whom I remember from the first Independence Day movie and the adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Slim is a cattle rustler said to be capable of stealing 5,000 cattle in one night. The secret to his success is his yodeling skills, which hypnotizes any cow that hears him. His partners in crime are his buffalo steed, Junior, who makes me think of Buff, the buffalo head from the Country Bears. 
His assistant slash business partner, Mr. Weasley, voiced by Steve Buscemi, and his nephews, the Willie Brothers. More on them later. Anyway, Slim was able to steal Maggie's herd at the beginning of the movie, as well as a cattle drive of Texas Longhorns. However, Slim's real evil plan is to disguise himself as a businessman named Yancey Odell in order to sneak into all the auctions in order to buy out every territory in the Old West. Next are Slim's dim-witted nephews, the Willie Brothers, all voiced by Disney writer and storyboard artist Sam J. Levine. These guys are extremely slow and dumb. They don't seem to be very evil in the slightest, just dim-witted and not very intelligent. They are not malicious like their uncle, and they don't possess any evil intentions to be like him. However, the brothers do have some level of endurance, such as withstanding multiple slaps and hits from Slim, and seemingly recovering from being kicked by Slim's boot. Next we have Rico, a mysterious bounty hunter voiced by Charles Dennis. This guy has been capturing many bad guys for the sheriff, and Buck looks up to him as a hero. When Rico tells the sheriff that he needs a fresh horse to help him capture Alameda Slim, Buck shows off in front of them and Rico selects him until later, during Buck's argument with the girls, he thinks that Buck is too skittish around cows and chooses another horse. However, nearing the end of the movie, Rico was revealed to be on Alameda Slim's scheme by removing any evidence that may lead to the latter's capture, much to Buck's disappointment. Last but not least, we have Lucky Jack, voiced by Charles Hayde. To me, Jack is a very hilarious sidekick, due to him getting his peg leg on fire sometimes. When he meets the girls, he tells them that he and many other jackrabbits used to live in Echo Mine until Alameda Slim flushed them all out. I also think that Jack is a very helpful and reliable character when it comes to assisting the girls to catch Slim. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Home on the Range may not be a favorite to several Disney fans, but I find this to be a very underrated Disney movie. And while this movie did kill traditional hand-drawn animation until 2009, the animation in this movie is very artistic, even if some of the characters can sometimes be a little cartoony. The main characters, Maggie, Grace, and Miss Calloway, are very daring. Buck can sometimes be a jerk, but he's very adventurous. And the villain, Alameda Slim, is very threatening and an underrated Disney villain. Lastly, the fight scenes are very kick-ass, and the songs by Alan Menken and Glenn Slater are really funny and full of Western spirit. As for my final rating, I give this movie a 69% out of 100. Well, that's all for now, partners. Be sure to join me again for my next blog. Mustang Power!